everybody. In this video, I want to show you how to find the p-value when you're performing a hypothesis test for a mean and the population standard deviation or sigma is known. So we've actually already used this formula before, but I figured I would post it again just to make sure um, you're comfortable with it and to remind you that it's getting used here as well. So the p-value method is one way that we can hypothesis test. And again, in this particular video, we're focusing on hypothesis testing for means where the population standard deviation is known. So let's say you go through the starting part of your hypothesis test and you end up with a Z value, for instance, of negative 2.23. Now, the other thing you would need to know is what kind of test you have. So if you have a left tail test, we would do the following. The formula we're going to use here is just norm distribution, and uh, so N-O-R-M dot D-I-S-T. And again, we've seen this one before. Uh, we've used this in previous videos. And this is how you can find the area to the left or the probability to the left of that Z-score. So I'm going to put in the Z-score first, negative 2.23. Now remember, you're doing Z-scores here, so your mean will always be 0. Your standard deviation will always be 1. And then you're going to type in cumulative as true because you do want the area to the left. And then I would go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and that would be your p-value. Now, just to kind of make a note here, we're using norm.dist. We're putting in our z-value first here. We're going to put in 0 and 1 in this particular case because we're doing the mean and standard deviation for z-scores. And then we're going to type that word true. Now let's just do another example. Let's say our z-score instead was positive 1.15 and I had a right-tailed test. So you're still gonna start the same way. My z-score is 1.15, mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and we're going to go ahead and say true. But don't forget for a right-tailed test, you do need to subtract that answer with one. So we're going to do one minus whatever value we get here. And that would be our p-value for the right-tailed test. So we subtract uh, our answer from Excel with one. Um, and don't forget, when you use Excel, the area is always going to be to the left. So you have to go ahead and make that change. Now, the last thing that could happen is you could have a two-tailed test. So if you have a two-tailed test, all you need to do is find the area in one of the tails and then multiply it by two. Now, let's say your z-score here is positive 3.35. When you're doing a two-tailed test and you're using the formula to get that test statistic, so that z-score in this case, um, you could get a positive or negative value. Um, I prefer to do my work with the negative value. I think it's easier. So if you have a positive value um, you know, in the formula, you also have the negative version. And the same thing the other way around. So if you end up using the formula and getting the negative version, well, you also have the positive version too. A two-tailed test means you're shading on both sides of the graph and normal curves are symmetric. So if you know one of them, you know the other one. For me, I prefer to use the negative side because then I don't have to worry about subtracting with one to get the area on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the left side here instead. I'm gonna use my normal uh, dist function. So my z-score is negative 3.35. Type 0, 1, and then true. And then what we would do is we would take that z-score and we would multiply it by 2. And that would give you your p-value if you have a two-tailed test. Um, again, you can use the area in either tail. They would be the same. I prefer to tend to use the left side because I don't have to worry about subtracting with 1. Um, but you could do it as well. So Either way is fine. Again, whatever Z value you get, you have both a positive and negative here because you're doing two tailed. Um, so for me, I like to take the left one, I find that area, and then I'm just going to multiply it by two. All right, so nothing really new here, just a matter of applying the same formula in a new scenario. And I hope you found this video helpful.